Yo, what the fuck is going down, everybody? It's your boy, the Sauceman X. I'm back at you niggas with another goddamn video today. So, anyways, you already see this. Now, I just realized something, okay? I just realized something, and you already see it, okay? The NBA has officially announced that they will not announce, but they've officially done this thing called the NBA Playoff Bracket Challenge. Now, I didn't even know that this challenge even existed. Until about, until yesterday when I was watching the, you know, obviously the playoff games, the playoff games are fucking crazy. Three out of the four underdogs came in and win game one. And I'm actually really surprised with how the teams, okay, the underdog fucking teams played with a lot more heart. You know what I'm saying? Played with a lot more grit than the teams that were favored. You know what I'm saying? Except for the Golden State Warriors, which they obviously won last night. But I was actually really fucking surprised. I already made two videos about it yesterday. So... It is just crazy, okay? It is just crazy day, okay? Yesterday in the fucking NBA. Now, the NBA, okay? I saw it on a commercial, okay? I literally saw this on a commercial last night where they were saying that if you go on this NBA bracket challenge thing, then you will win a fucking... You may p potentially win a million dollars. Now, I don't even know how the fucking shit works. Again, that's what I heard. That's what I said. That's what I heard in the fucking commercial. You win a million dollars. I'm not sure if you're actually going to win a million dollars, but I might as well. I went ahead and I fucking signed up to this shit to see if I can go ahead and make the correct predictions in the NBA playoffs. Because I'm really good at making predictions, okay? I'm really good at making predictions when it comes to the NBA playoffs. I believe last year that I, I believe that last year I only got like three predictions wrong when it came to the entire NBA playoffs. In 2018, I only got like three predictions wrong in terms of being wrong about a series. Only got three of them wrong. So... This video, of course, is going to be a very short video since I already made three separate videos about me predicting this shit. But it's weird, okay? It's weird how the NBA just now, okay, decided to make this whole challenge thing, this whole bracket challenge thing. Because I believe they've been doing it, and of course they did it with the NCAA tournament thing. And of course they did it with the fucking, and the fucking football league. You know what I'm saying? With the NFL, I believe they did that with the fantasy football thing. Well, I, I, technically there was, there was fantasy, fantasy basketball, I think. But other than that. I'm surprised it took them this long just to do a bracket challenge and shit. So, I'm going to go ahead and make this short video because you already know my predictions. But I'm going to make an updated predictions based off of what I witnessed. Okay, you know what I'm saying? With the games last night. And I'll go ahead and I'll make a fucking separate video about my, you know, game one announcement. But, let me just go ahead and start with the Eastern Conference. This is going to be a short video. Let me just go ahead and start with the Eastern Conference. We already saw the game last night, which was fucking crazy. Patrick Beverly going off. You know what I'm saying? We're not going off in terms of playing really fucking good, but... Going off in the sense of him, ah, uh, him, him fighting. Okay, damn, damn near fighting Kevin Durant. Both getting ejected at the same time. It was a crazy game last night. Lou Williams was obviously dominating in the first half. It was just, it was just a crazy game. Okay, it was a crazy game. Even though the Clippers lost, I appreciate the fact that they've been, you know, they actually, you know, put in a lot of effort. You know what I'm saying? But the Golden State Warriors obviously win. Stephen Curry dropped like thirty something points. Had eight threes last night. Passing Ray Allen in the all-time scoreboard, you know, a fucking three-point shots. So it, it was crazy, okay? It was a fucking crazy game, but it was good. Draymond Green apparently is hitting all of his jump shots. So, uh, he, obviously, they're going to fucking win this series. Now, I'm surprised that the uh, Clippers are actually putting more of an effort than I expected. But I'm going to go ahead and pick the uh, fucking Warriors in four. Obviously, the Warriors are not going to lose this series. Probably not going to lose a single game this series. So, next... We have the Houston Rockets and the Utah Jazz. I don't even know if I'm even eligible to do this fucking challenge at all because the playoffs already started. But you already see we have the Houston Rockets versus the Utah Jazz, okay, with this fucking game. Now, Utah Jazz, obviously, as I said in my prediction, is that they're still going to have a lot, you know, they're going to deal with, the, I mean, well, the Rockets are going to deal with a lot of fucking problems this series. The Utah Jazz, not as good as they were last season, but they're still really good, and the Rockets beat them last season, but... I think the Jazz will give them a really big run for their money. As I said, it's probably going to go six games. So I'm at to put the Rockets in six. You know what I'm saying? Because, of course, you have Jay Crowder, who's also hard to deal with. You have Rudy Gobert. You have Donovan Mitchell. You know what I'm saying? Even though he's not as good as he was last season, but still good. And you have Kyle Korver who can come in and pull up a three. And they have a great, great cohesive team where, you know, they're good. You know, one of the best defensive teams in the league other than the Indiana Pacers. And, of course, all you need if you're James Harden, you know what I'm saying, or if you're the Houston Rockets, you just need James Harden, who is obviously the greatest player in the world. And if you have Chris Paul healthy, then you can... They would have made the finals last year. 
You know what I'm saying? If Chris Paul was fully healthy, and as long as you have Eric Gordon doing his thing, you have people protecting the rim, such as Nene and Clint Capella, then you should be good. And everyone else in the team shooting efficiently, then yeah, everything's good. Yeah, yeah. And then next, we have the Portland Trailblazers, okay, versus the uh, Oklahoma City Thunder, which this series is also yet to happen. But still, I maintain my, my, I maintain my original prediction with... Having the Portland Trailblazers, there's going to be too much to deal with with Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum, and they're going to be really tough to beat at home, you know. And as I said, the uh, Oklahoma City Thunder are not really a consistent team, okay? They've been going on lots of losing streaks this season when they had a hard schedule. So they're not going to be consistent enough to handle the Trailblazers in an entire seven-game series. So I'm going to have to say the Portland Trailblazers, Trailblazers are going to come and win this series, of course, with Nurkic, you know, other people fucking dominating, Miles Leonard, you know, all the significant role players on the team. Coming in and winning, you know what I'm saying? You also have Seth Curry. You can also bring that, put that nigga in there. So, we, I mean, they're going to win this series. I'm going to say it goes six games, okay? This might go seven. This literally might go seven. But I see the Portland Trailblazers winning, you know what I'm saying, in about six games, winning on their home court and beating the uh, um, Oklahoma City Thunder on the road, at least winning one game on the road where they might fucking slip up. It's not like they're going to be unstoppable, which is weird how a lot of people think that they're going to win this series. So, next... Obviously, we have it right here, the Denver Nuggets and the San Antonio Spurs. Now, originally, I pre I picked the San Antonio Spurs, I mean, the Denver Nuggets to win this series. But, of course, we already saw the fucking game last night. The Denver Nuggets are obviously proving themselves to be inconsistent. So, I'm picking the San Antonio Spurs to win this series. Obviously, with Derek White dominating last fucking game. You have Forbes dominating last game. And, of course, you have the significant role players such as Bertans and Podol. Even with DeMar DeRozan not performing up to expectation in the first half especially, and LaMarcus all just playing like shit in the first half, you know, only getting like four points or some shit like that at the end of the first half and getting into foul trouble, they still managed to win on the road. And the thing is, is that you cannot beat the San Antonio Spurs at home. When they're at home, you cannot beat the San Antonio Spurs. So cause they have the third best home record in the entire fucking league. That's why you don't let the seventh seed fool you. And they're obviously inconsistent. Murray was the only consistent player last night. You had Nikola Jokic. That's why you cannot fuck with the San Antonio Spurs' system. His system, okay, his coaching, put Nurkic on, I mean, not Nurkic, put um, Jokic on the bench more than he would like to. You know what I'm saying? Because his fucking rotations and shit, like, you know, dominated. So, and he limited his points to only 10 fucking points. You cannot beat the San Antonio Spurs if you don't have one specific player dominating and carrying the whole team. You cannot beat the Spurs with inexperience. So, I'm going to say the Spurs, I would like to say five games because they're going to take a 3-1 lead, at least in my opinion. But I'm going to have to go ahead and just say that it's six games. Give them the benefit of the doubt because I'm trying to be accurate with this overall prediction. So now we have the Houston Rockets versus the uh, Golden State Warriors. This game, I mean, this series, obviously, without, you know, uh, expansion on that shit, we, I'm going to have to go ahead and give this uh, a Golden State Warriors. Obviously, they're not fucking around, you know what I'm saying, with the way they played last night. They were pretty much dominating, controlling the tempo of the whole game. And I don't think the Houston Rockets will be able to handle that especially with their five fucking all-stars. So the Rockets will put up a really good fight, but I think with everyone healthy, they won't be able to handle them in a seven-game series. They just don't have the talent. They just don't have the ability to do it. So I would say that the Golden State Warriors, as I said, maintaining my same prediction, win in about six games. This series. Now, I would love to say that the Trailblazers, I mean, the Spurs would win the series, but I personally don't think that they have that much of a legitimate chance. What the fuck? Is that a plane? What the fuck? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and give the fucking uh, Trailblazers the fucking series, obviously, simply because uh, dominating, okay, they're fucking dominating like fuck, they were going to be dominating like fuck in my opinion, they'll have a harder time against Oklahoma City Thunder in my opinion, but, you know, I'll just give them the de benefit of the doubt, you know what I'm saying, and again, you can't rely on one player, okay, Derek White to fucking carry your ass throughout the entire playoff run, so I don't think, I think the Spurs system will get them to some extent, but I don't think that they will eventually be victorious okay in the entire fucking uh series but i'm at this give spurs are going to give them a huge run for the money take them to about six games next we have the golden state Warriors, and i'm obviously going to pick the golden state Warriors. originally i said that this was going to be a gentleman sweep but i'm going to say that it's going to be an actual fucking sweep simply because they're going to be I'm, they're just going to play even better the more that they get experience with each other you know what i'm saying along with the marcus cousins as the fucking uh playoff progresses playoffs progresses and after they beat the Warriors, they beat the Rockets they're gonna be like holy shit this is gonna be easy as fuck so I'm gonna say the fucking uh Warriors will win next right here we obviously have uh the uh, Milwaukee Bucks you know also considering the fact that um the fuck you call that shit 
We have the Milwaukee Bucks. Okay, I don't even know if Blake Griffin's gonna even be playing. Okay, this fucking series. We don't. We don't fucking know. And then right now we have the uh, Indiana Pacers and the uh, Boston Celtics. They're playing right now. Currently, right now they are playing at this fucking moment. So I'm at to say Celtics are probably gonna win this series, but the Pacers are gonna give them a really big run for the money. I'm at to give them give them the series in about six games. But the Pacers are actually really fucking talented. The only problem with the Pacers is that they don't have that one player that can shine in and take over the game. You just have a player, a team full of really great, consistent players that are no better than just being a role player, not a player that will just come in and dominate. Of course, we have Darren Collison. You have Tyreek Evans coming off the bench. You got Sabonis doing his fucking thing. You got Miles Turner. You got Thaddeus Young. You have a lot of really decent players, but they don't reach superstardom. And that's not going to beat the Celtics once they regain extra momentum. And they have all that firepower with all the young talent they have. With obviously Jason Tatum, fucking Terry Rozier, Kyrie Irving, all these motherfuckers. You have Marcus Smart, Al Horford. Again, they're not going to be able to handle all that firepower once they get into a massive run. Especially when they're playing at home. So I would say the Celtics... But I, I would say they, I, I would say you know also with Wesley Matthews also be dominating all the paces. I would say they give them a really big run for the money. So I'm at to say it's about six games. Don't be surprised if it's five. Next we have the 76ers and the Brooklyn Nets. Now I'm picking the 76ers this series, but goddamn, okay, goddamn, I'm at to go ahead and say that it's going to be seven because there's always that one fucking series. I did not even pick any seven games here. There's always that one fucking series that goes seven games that I didn't expect it to go seven, but the. Nets win last game, completely dominating. D'Angelo Russell didn't even need to dominate. He only had like seven points at the end of the first half. But you already know we have other motherfuckers in there dominating, such as uh, Joe Harris, who came out of the gate firing, hitting three straight three-point shots, setting the momentum. And you have Levert. Literally, this nigga Levert drops 30 fucking points. You have great defense down low with Allen. You're the guy with the big-ass afro. And you also have great significant contributions from Dinwiddie. Amazing bench, amazing team chemistry. And they beat them last night, but all the Sixers need to do to win this series is just utilize your big man. Okay, that's all you have to do. Utilize your fucking big man in Joel Embiid. That's all you need to fucking do because the Nets are a small fucking team. They really, if you think about it, they really don't have a true big man. So you just need to utilize Joel Embiid a lot more, which is what they did in like the first two minutes of the game. But then they just... You know, they just spent the rest of the time not being able to handle the Nets hitting all the three-point shots. And you can't do that with a bunch of inconsistent-ass fucking players, which I was right about. I was right about the fucking Sixers being inconsistent. J.J. Reddick, four points. Tobias Harris, four points. Like, what the fuck? The only nigga that was dominating was Jimmy Butler. Of course, he's doing his thing, so I'm actually proud that Jimmy Butler is going to show up this series. But they're going to be hard to beat. The Nets are really going to be hard to beat on the road. So I'd say the Sixers probably take one on the road, but then they'll eventually fuck it. It'll, it it's going to go seven games, okay? It's going to go seven games, in my opinion. And Raptors, losing to the Magic last night. Okay, fucking crazy. But I'm at to say the Raptors will come in and win this series. It's probably going to be a six games. But I was low-key wrong. I was actually wrong about the Toronto Raptors because I thought they weren't going to choke. But we already saw it last night. Kyle Lowry had a whopping zero points, okay? Which is just fucking ridiculous. So, but Kawhi Leonard's still doing his thing. He hit a cute few clutch shots near the end. So I can, I still think they'll show up in the fourth quarter. And they had obviously always had the ability to take the fucking game to where they almost won. You know what I'm saying? At least unless they were playing against LeBron James, they still can almost win a fucking game. So all you need is Kawhi Leonard in the fourth quarter. But if Kyle Lowry had like 10 points, they would have fucking won the game. It's ridiculous. So this one, I'm at to pick the Milwaukee Bucks. Look, here's the thing. I They're going to struggle against the Pacers, and they're just a bunch of fucking role players on that team that are really consistent and really good. But I would say that it's going to be hard for them to win. Okay, they're they're going to lose in five. Okay, to the Milwaukee Bucks. Just amazing. Okay, as I said, Bledsoe, Mid Middleton, Giannis, Antetokounmpo. This is just too much fucking talent. And they're actually pretty good on the road. And I think that the Celtics will be slipping a lot. So... I would say, uh, yeah, they're, the Atlanta Magic, they're going to give them a little bit of a run for their money. So they're probably going to win, win game three or game four. So anyways, next 76ers, I'm picking the fucking Raptors, okay? And this is a Raptors in five games because they're playing like shit. So uh, uh, let's see. They're going to play like shit. I mean, Butler might dominate, but the inconsistency of the, si of the Sixers is going to propel them to a loss. So next we have... Uh, uh, of course, the Milwaukee Bucks and Raptors. I'm picking the fucking Raptors in this bitch. So, uh, yeah, we're picking the fucking Raptors. As I said, this is going to be the one that goes seven games. It's going to go down to the wire. But again, they have a lot of talent with Siakam. And, I mean, Kyle Lowry's going to play like a little bitch. But, again, I don't think that you necessarily need Kyle Lowry because he's the only player that choked last night, which is good because usually it's the entire fucking team. So this one, I'm picking the Golden State Warriors in a fucking sweep. Okay. The fuck? Okay. 
So I'm picking Golden State in a sweep because they're obviously going to fucking win. I'm not even going to elaborate on this shit. How much will they win in a margin of game one in the finals? I would say about 25 fucking points. So anyways, I made my prediction. Let's see if I'm fucking right. Anyways, it's your boy, the Sauce Man. Check the fucking out of your piece. Let's get a million dollars.